Hi everybody, I'm going to show you how I'm going to tackle the shadow work in my still life of my little toy dinosaurs with colored pencils. And obviously I started with a light version, mostly water, a little bit of paint of each of the colors. And so I started with that, let that dry, and then did a second pass with that same color, a lot less water, a little more paint in the mix for each of them. And one thing I also did at the beginning was put a little bit of masking fluid to keep the little bright white highlights in place so I didn't, didn't lose the white of the paper in some places. So those three steps. And I'm going to show you the, the basics of what to do for shadows. Now, I do have some pretty kind of soft, feathery shadows that happen on the table. So what I'm going to do is to start with just water. And I'm using a pretty wide brush for this. And what I want to do is to just wet the paper in places where those shadows are going to happen. So I'm just gonna do this one, one area of shadow under my green dinosaur. So I'm just painting it with water. The reason I wanna wet the paper is obviously to let some of the shadow color that I put on soften out and bleed out and to have softer edges. I have more distinct sections of shadow in this object over here on the left. As you can see my finger, it starts to get really feathery and soft as I move out like this, but it's very sharp right here at the tip of my finger. So that happens here with the dinosaur's feet. So I wanna keep that section really sharp, but over here where it starts to kind of feather out, I wanna wet the paper. So I've done that with my big brush, and I don't want to let it dry completely. I want to kind of go right in there with my shadow. So looking at the shadow, there is some blue to it. It's a cool shadow, so I'm going to work up a little bit of ultramarine blue. But I'm also going to put a little bit of my burnt umber. Okay, so um, a warm brown with a cool blue. I'm going to make a fairly kind of neutral color. And what I want is maybe somewhere in between the blue and the brown. So I've got a fairly neutral kind of gray here. But there are some places in the shadow that are quite green, right? It's the reflection of the color of the object in the shadow. So I'm gonna put that in there as well, but let's start with this one. And let's go ahead and do this, the area of that shadow where it starts to kind of move out this way. Next with the tail. And you can see that the paper has, the wash that I put in there has already dried a little bit, so you could probably work a little bit more quickly. But I'm gonna get the, the basics of that shadow shape in there. It almost kind of looks like a camel and stretched out. And again, working quickly because I want to make sure I can soften these edges a little bit. I've got some water on my brush. I'm gonna kind of go around that shadow, the edges of that shadow, just to kind of soften those up a little bit. Blotting my brush and kind of moving along the edges. And if I need to fill in or add a little more kind of heavy color, I can certainly do that. 
Don't want to overwork it too much. Kind of feathering that out. Each time I go back to the water, I'm kind of blotting my brush on a um, paper towel just to make sure I'm letting that fade out at the edges. You can soften this one as well. It got a little bit dry on me, but if I work quickly, I can kind of pull some of that up. Feather that out, blotting my brush. And then something else I can do with my shadow shape is there may be places where the color shifts a little bit more and I don't want it to just be gray everywhere. One thing I notice is the green happens over here on the legs very distinctly and I'm gonna put that in there with a little bit more of that sharper shape that I mentioned. But let's put that in with some green. So I've got my ultramarine blue again with my brown. And then to that, I'm going to put some Viridian. And with this shape, this shadow casts directly from the foot of the toy and kind of dips up a little bit. Let's see if I can get that shape with my brush. And it connects on the other side of my pencil here. So I'm going to go back with a brush and kind of pull that into my shadow shape. And then maybe soften the edges just a little bit. While it's still wet, I'm going to go back in. I've got my kind of greenish tint in my shadow. I'm going to put a little more pronounced green color, which I think happens right here. And then one thing I also don't want to forget is the, obviously the shadow from the pencil right next to it, right? So I've got this shadow here too. So my pencil is casting a shadow, but there's also some green happening in that one. So let's pick that up. And the shadow itself is just a little bit wider than the pencil. Let's see if I can widen that up a little bit. And then again, I'm going to take a brush, blot that a little bit, run my edge along the very end of that shadow. Soften it just a little bit too. And if I feel like the color is a little bit heavy in places, you know, while it's still wet, you can lift it just slightly. Just 
something I think I will do right here. So I think as this shadow dries, of course the paper is gonna flatten a little more and you can probably, you know, get a sense of what that will look like, but when it flattens and settles down, we'll have a little more so of that sense of cast shadow from that object. And I think one thing that could be possible is darkening up the shadow as it happens right underneath my dinosaur's tail right here. So it's possible to darken those shadows even after you paint them and to blend that with what you have just painted. So if I put a darker shape like that as a second second pass or second layer and I go back with my brush and just kind of integrate it again. Right? Hope that helps.